again, hoping everyone will stick within the five minutes. I will try very hard to do that. Um, my first question is really for both of you. Uh, Director Ray, you referenced in your opening statement the OSADEF strike forces, and that stands for Organized Crime Drug Task Forces. Um, can you talk a little more, both of you, actually, about um, the benefits of OSADEF and what those strike forces do as we're trying to combat the um, substance crisis, misuse crisis in this country? Uh, so I'll, I'll start. I think, um, to me, when I think of OSADEF, I, I really think of when it's working at its best, um, there are really two, two concepts. One is the value of partnership, uh, and the other is the importance of intelligence. Uh, the value of partnership, both because uh, in this world of limited resources uh, and a seemingly unlimited threat, uh, in this case, the, the flood of uh, really poison into this country, uh, courtesy of the cartels, uh, we have to look for ways to working closely with our partners to maximize impact. And then the intelligence side, uh, I think, again, when OSADEF is working at its best, it's focused on how to prioritize, how to be strategic so that team partnership effort is really focused on what we can do collectively to really maximize the impact uh, because we're up against a very sophisticated set of adversaries. Um, Administrator, can you also speak to, I was in, as we discussed on our call, I was in Colombia last month, and one of the things we heard as we were meeting with folks there is um, a recognition that we're now seeing cocaine mixed with fentanyl. Can you also speak to that and how OSADEF is looking specifically at fentanyl? Uh, yes, Senator. Um, it's one of the things that we've seen across the United States over the past year is we have seen what the cartels and their drug distributors across the United States are doing is in addition to these fake pills that they make to look exactly like real medicines, they are hiding fentanyl in drugs like cocaine, methamphetamine, and heroin, and they are marketing and selling those drugs as though they were simply, as, they were, as if they were only cocaine, only meth, only heroin. And we've seen Americans die across the United States from drug poisonings. We issued a public safety letter last year to our law enforcement partners to alert them to this. Um, we want everyone to understand the risk of fentanyl. It is the deadliest drug we've ever seen widespread in the United States. It is 50 times more addictive than heroin, and just a tiny amount can kill someone. So many Americans do not know that they're taking it, and they're dying. It's really frightening, as I hear from constituents in New Hampshire. Um, on a regular basis. This is a more parochial question because we have um, a new DEA lab going into Manchester, New Hampshire that is gonna be really critical as we look at how we um, can identify um, different drugs that we're seeing and that's important if we're gonna prosecute those people responsible. Um, but. That project has been delayed longer than I thought it should be. So can you talk about how we're going to move that project forward and get it done so we can um, use it to help get drugs off the street? Yes, Senator. I share your concern on this because we have nine DEA labs across the United States today, um, and we are doing everything to work as quickly as we can, but we have never seen more fentanyl in the United States. We have never seen more methamphetamine. And so we need the ability to have this additional lab to process all the fentanyl, methamphetamine, and other drugs that are coming into the United States um, and across the country. So our understanding is that that project has been delayed. This is not a permanent solution, but we will be operational this summer working as one DEA. Our field division is going to give us space, so we are already starting to hire chemists, and we will work out of our local field division to do as much as we possibly can while we're waiting for that space to get built. Well, thank you. Um, I am ready to do anything I can to help move this project along, so we will stay in very close touch. Um, Director Ray, in the few seconds that I have left, can you talk about the FISA 702 authority and why that's so important to um, our work to track down transnational criminal organizations and drug lords? So Section 702 is sort of the critical ingredient for the entire intelligence community to protect Americans from foreign threats overseas uh, that affect our national security. Um, and it is what 
we rely on to protect Americans from international terrorism, from uh, cyber espionage, from cyber attacks, from foreign adversaries, but also, uh, as Director Burns, I think, has, has cited in some public testimony of his own, uh, it has been uh, very useful uh, in illuminating uh, with the Mexican drug cartels in particular uh, drug networks and global supply chains. Again, if you think about foreign threats, you've got the Mexican drug cartels getting chemicals from China. So you've got two foreign threats, in effect, combined with one. And the ability to be agile as these adversaries, much as Administrator Milgram referenced in some of her comments already, the reliance on technology by these adversaries requires the intelligence community to be able to be agile and nimble uh, and not to be constantly playing catch up with the bad guys. And that's where 702 becomes so important. But again, it's focused on foreign adversaries, not Americans, overseas, but it's foreign threats overseas that impact us here. Well, thank you. I'm sure we'll get into it more in the closed session. I'm going to now turn the mic over to Senator Moran and go vote. And if anybody else has not yet voted on the first vote, uh, the time has run out. Thank you, 